you know people don't understand tier zero formats? You don't understand tier zero format. The world doesn't understand tier zero formats. I know it's been a few years since we've had Spiral, but Jesus Christ, we got to get into this comment section. Dark World will be garbage. Let's dive on into it. All jokes aside, I'm kidding. You know, I love you all in the comment section, but I thought that this would make for a bit of an interesting discussion video because there's some things that I want to clear up from this discussion video that I think would make for actually a really good discussion. So with that out of the way, let's do this right. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that subscribe button as we open up a can of whoop-ass on our t-shirt. Since y'all like commenting about the t-shirts that I wear, I love that Black Ops 2 t-shirt. I found it out in my closet, just dusted it off a little bit, still fit my fat ass just fine. Although I'm like 168 pounds, I don't know if that's considered a fat ass in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. But besides the point, <laughs> I want to talk about the comment section on my Dark World video, specifically, Yu-Gi-Oh! players don't understand Tier 0 formats and alternate formats. I gotta figure out how the fuck I'm gonna put that in a title, but besides the point, okay. Um, before I get into this, I do want to say really quick, I'm not trying to attack anyone that commented on this video. I, I just want to provide this as a discussion. So, like, if you see your name here or on the, the screen, whatever, I might just end up reading these off because it's late and I'm tired as hell. I've had a long day. Um... But don't take this as like I'm trying to attack you or something. I want to just have this be a discussion that hopefully you can learn something from. Because I realize now that, especially because the channel has grown, we're at over a thousand subscribers, which feels so damn good. <laughs> um, I get a lot of different people from different walks of life in Yu-Gi-Oh! that see my channel. There may be some of you that watch my videos because you saw my Master Duel, aka I should say Master Shit videos, and we call it Master Shits because I refuse to call it Master Duel until it's a good game, which, say it together with me, ladies and gentlemen, it never fucking will be. So there are people that have came from that side of things where I made that video where I said, yu gi fallen so far so fast, Master Duel's terrible, it has over 7,000 views. Then I had the Mystic Mind first place YCS Brazil video that got over 14,000 views. It's now the second most popular video on my channel, which is insane to think about as well. Then I have people who've just seen my discussion videos or deck profiles or talk about the metagame or maybe my Yu-Gi-Oh! retrospectives, which brings in a different audience. So I have so many different clumps of audiences that may or may not watch all of my videos, which can lead to different... I guess, perspectives on the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's okay. That's what makes for a community on YouTube, whether it's for a specific channel or just a community as a whole, is different perspectives. That's a great thing. What I want to tackle here specifically is people saying that things like the Dark World Structure Deck are good in the game, even in a Tier 0 format, because it's something casual that you can play. And yes, there are a lot of people that play Yu-Gi-Oh! casually, just out in the world in general, but... When I look at it from my perspective, where I live in Florida in the United States, I know I have a lot of EU viewers um, in the United States, I live in Florida, I live amongst a competitive state, right? Like I, where I live in Florida is a lot of competitive players. There's a lot of places in Florida that have like competitive OTS stores like that play all meta all the time. And I've been playing this game competitively for over 10 years. I have seen so many tier zero formats and I know how this song and dance goes. I know how all of the notes play. <laughs> and what we will see until we get a ban list is that every product not named Photon fucking Hypernova is going to be irrelevant as dog shit. Because who the hell needs a common skill drain out of a structure deck when you can pull one from Magnificent Mavens? They're $3 a piece right now. I think they go up to like 4 I was looking at the market earlier today. So like three seventy seven to 4 American dollars if you want hollow skill drains. Why are you going to pay $33 plus tax for three structure decks to play a deck that is garbage? I'm sorry. To get a common skill drain. You know, and that's why I mentioned that these other structure decks had good cards in them, like Ash Blossom and D Shifter and the Crystal Beast structure deck that made it worth buying. You you made good value if you bought those structure decks. So with that out of the way, let's dive into some of these comments here. So this person says, I have to buy it because I already have 
play sets of every Dark World card and Ultimate Rare, that's got to be sexy to look at. And the moment when I look into some kid's eyes when he sees full Ultimate Rare deck is more worth it than topping regionals. Honestly, <laughs> that's a pretty good feeling, Chief. Uh, this person said, if I'm a casual player, is it worth it to buy three? I really don't care about meta, just love the art and fun decks. And to this person, I said, you do you, boo-boo. But the thing is, is that you, you need to understand that you're not getting your money's worth. Quite honestly, for a structured deck like this, you're probably better off just buying the singles that you need to build a Dark World deck. Like, seriously, like, don't even spend the 30 plus dollars. Just save your money. Uh, this person said, you're comparing tier zero to a $10 deck. It will be the strongest structured deck in history. Okay, yeah. Well, whatever you say, homie, I, I see what you did there. <laughs> but this person's comment still rings true. I'm comparing tier zero to a $10 deck. Uh, first of all, no, I'm not. I want to explain that. I'm comparing a tier zero format to a deck that's dog shit. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Because when you look at the current format, when you look at what happened in YCS Germany, when you look at the YCS, I think it was like, what, Pasadena? Uh, Ishizu 2 Element was just the best deck, period, full stop, end of discussion. We all know this. Whether you're casual or not, you know at least to a degree what the best decks in the competitive sphere of Yu-Gi-Oh! are, right? And so you're going to know that like, hey, Ishizu 2 Element is a really good deck. Even if you're casual, if you go against that deck, you want to at least know how to beat it. You want to at least have some kind of idea. Hey, I'm playing a Crystal Beast deck, but this is how I can beat Ishizu Tier. So I'm not saying that like Dark World is just bad because we're in a tier zero format. I'm saying it's bad because all of the other decks that are meta competitively viable, which is very few in a tier zero format, it is not going to be one of those in my humble opinion. Does that mean you shouldn't play the deck at all? I mean, you can experiment with it. And if you want to play casually, absolutely. But why waste your money on the deck when you can test it out and try it for free on EDO Pro, on Dueling Book, on Dueling Nexus? It's not even in Master Shits yet. What do you think is going to happen to Master Shits when they get a Shizu tier element at full power with the mill support? That game is dead in the water. Imagine how dead it's going to be once they get those cards. They may not even ever get those cards because Konami realizes how dog water the cards are in the IRL game. So why waste your money to go to Walmart and get this crap? Like there's there's no reason at all other than to like get a dual links little coupon card or whatever or to get common skill drains that you don't want to pay three dollars a piece for. So why waste your money when you can put it towards something else? And that brings up my next point. One of my uh subscribers here, uh well Actually, yes, this, this was his comment here. So he said, people can still buy the structure deck and instead of playing in a competitive format, play Heart of the Underdog format, which is like, if you've seen the Rivalry of Warlords common charity format, it's a different sub-format of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, locals are doing it, aren't they? It's a format created by Konami. And some locals are. Um, my locals does like Edison format once a month, but they're not doing like the common charity format. They're not doing either, both of my locals that I have here in my area. One of them does Edison format once a month. The other one just does advanced format. So not all the locals at every single OTS store is doing these different formats. It just depends if they have enough support for it. And so I explained to this person that me as a competitive player, I'm not going to invest my time and money because my time is limited enough as it is. To play a game that I enjoy, I'm not going to invest money into a side set, into a side format that has no competitive value. And what I mean by that, <clears throat> let's take Speed Duel, for example. At YCSs and things, you may see some side events that involve Speed Duels. But let me ask you this. Are we ever going to get a YCS that is solely dedicated to Speed Duels? No, we fucking won't. Because Speed Duels aren't that big of a thing there's not that many people saying holy shit speed duels are amazing like let's have a regional dedicated to just the speed duel format like no it's a side thing so why am i going to invest my time into getting better at Yu-Gi-Oh? because i've been competitive for over 10 years into something like speed duels like if i wanted to do something like that i would rather do that for free in a simulator which you can do on edo pro and, I, and even dueling book you can have the card pool on there for free and you don't have to invest and you can just play casually that way. There's no reason to invest. You know, it's different if like you're a competitive player like me or Yaxine or Cali Effect or Pack, right? 
because we are all competitive players. We're going to go on Dueling Book and EDO Pro and try out these cards first before we buy them or before we get a case of Photon Hypernova, which I'll be doing. So be sure that you're subscribed to the channel or a case of Darkwing Blast or a case of Power of the Elements, whatever set, you know, insert the name here. So um, I went on to say uh, not everyone wants to play in those side formats. He said, why? It's still another competitive format, kind of. It's really not. But you use other weaker decks. To me, it looks more appealing than the hellish landscape the normal competitive is. But that's where the casual and the competitive kind of splits off, right? Because if you look at competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, even though it's a tier zero format, it does require skill. And I believe I mentioned that in this video, that you need to make sure that you chain your triggers correctly. You need to make sure you know how your deck functions. If you're gonna play a Shizu tier, you need to know the ins and outs of that deck so that you get rewarded properly. You need to know how to play Flunderies properly because if you don't, you're gonna get kicked in the face for it. Uh, you need to know how to play Sprite properly and know when to chain your hand traps. That's the skill involved in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! And a lot of people like that. Not everybody does, but that's where the cool competitive fun is in Yu-Gi-Oh! And once we get Cash Tira, they really don't lock out all five of your monster zones in the first turn. I've been testing that out. They lock out like three, maybe four, depending on how you open. It's really not that not that scary. I, I promise you that. It loses the hand trap in Nibiru. So that right there should already tell you, oh, hey, maybe this isn't as bad as some people are making it out to be. You have to understand, too, that a lot of YouTubers will say shit just to try and get views and clicks and clickbait and shit. You know, like, it. everybody does it. Like, anyway, yeah. So um, I explained to this person, I prefer the regular advanced format, personally. Nothing wrong with different formats. Just doesn't feel like I'm getting better as a player by playing in a fake-ish format. Like, Speed Duel is not a real format. It's not. Traditional format... <laughs> If you're playing traditional format, Godspeed to you because there's nothing but FTKs in there. Think about it. Every card that's banned is at one. <laughs> nah, I'd, I'd rather go touch grass. Uh, he goes on to say, I'm interested in the assumption you just made. I don't feel getting better as a player. Uh, being a better player doesn't mean becoming one with a deck that is uncontested by others. Well, it is because you need to play test, make sure you understand all your combo lines. Uh, always keep buying new and new and new decks. Well, I mean, that's Yu-Gi-Oh for you. That by nature is unfair to most. Not really because nothing says you have to buy the product, which is why I tell you not to buy it. Save your money. Uh, being the best or better is to learn to outplay, to bluff, to show your skills, uh, and a player in deck with all those innovation, new things that no one else ever thought for once would be a good thing. So basically he's just saying like, you know, playing tech cards that no one's thought to play is a good thing. And I agree with you, that's a good thing. And we've seen that, especially with a Shizu tier being tier zero. We see innovation. The Mystic Mind deck that came in top 64 at YCS Germany, it was a straight Mystic Mind deck with no burn with nine runic cards and it just milled the opponent out and just sat on Mystic Mind. Mystic Mind is really good right now. And if you play the competitive format, if you really study it and you see what decks are main decking what and side decking what and seeing how decks are playing right now, you realize, wait a minute, ding, 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 ding. No one's side decking for Mystic Mind. Ding, 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 ding. A Shizu tier is not playing Spell Cancer. They're not playing Eradicator. They're not playing that shit anymore. So then you put two and two together and you're like, Mystic Mind may be a booty, booty, butt cheek card, but it's going to get me some free wins. And when you realize that, when that light bulb goes off in your head, it's like discovering Asgard out of your butthole. Like it's the most beautiful experience ever. And it, it's like, it, you feel like you've just discovered gold and silver out in California. Like it's, you have that, what do you call it? That, that, that bell click moment, that, that light bulb moment. That's what I'm trying to think of. And when you get that feeling, there's nothing else like it because it feels like you've just solved a puzzle box that no one else has been able to solve. And that's what makes competitive so damn fun. Even when you're in a tier zero format, because some people look at a tier zero format and they say, Hey, this is my chance to figure out how to beat this best deck and show them who's boss. That's what a lot of people like about that. That's why I've said before with like old Yu-Gi-Oh versus modern Yu-Gi-Oh. That's a video on the channel. You should go check it out, shameless plug. Where old school Yu-Gi-Oh is more like chess, where it's like, okay, we're gonna have this back and forth. Whereas new school Yu-Gi-Oh, modern Yu-Gi-Oh is more like, hey, I've built up this giant castle. Can you break through my defenses? Can you break through the moat that I've built? Can you break through my negates? Not everybody likes that and that's fine. But when you understand how competitive Yu-Gi-Oh is today and you get that light bulb moment, it's a really amazing feeling. The last point that I want to make here before I end this video is the the last comment that I replied with on this. And I said, when you look at YouTube and what gets the most amount of views in Yu-Gi-Oh, which th this is true, you can go look at any videos, it's Master Shits, uh, Goat Format, Advanced Format, 
And in my area of the world, no one's interested in Speed Duel or traditional or anything else really, except maybe Edison format. I'm not interested in any retro formats besides Goat Control and occasionally Edison. I'm not interested in investing in Speed Duel format. I'm not interested in buying a structure deck for a deck that at face value doesn't look that good. I'm more interested in buying the cards I need for Cash Tira now instead of later, so I'm not playing paying any inflated prices. Doesn't mean I don't have fun with casual decks from time to time. God knows I do. But why waste my money on something that has no value when I can put that towards a new deck core and tier zero formats are great in some ways for innovation it can be argued that right now the format is skillful because if you don't arrange your trigger effects in the correct order then you screw yourself so look you can invest in what you want to invest in i'm not saying that konami should just have advanced and traditional and never try anything new because god knows that they like money too much for that but why am i as a competitive player am going to go towards speed duel to play in something different when I've already invested so much time into being a competitive player. It doesn't make me any better to play that particular different format. It doesn't make me any better to play in traditional format. Ways that you can be better is like playing old formats like Edison or Goat, where you have to have that skill of not just playing your cards, but mind games as well. Like I said in my Goat format retrospective, I really think you should go watch that if you haven't. It, you'd be surprised with how much you'll you'll learn. And I'm not saying it's like a shameless plug. Like I really did research, try and make sure that people would get something out of it and learn something new. Really proud of that series of videos. Um, and so something in like Speed Duel, that's just a simplified version of Yu-Gi-Oh! That's good for beginners that want to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! But to go into the advanced format, it's just a whole nother animal. And I feel like people are doing a disservice to themselves if they play in just these common charity, rivalry, warlords, speed duel formats. Because then if they say, oh, I wanna try advanced format, then they say, well, this sucks because there's so much summoning and zone blocking and milling. I don't like this shit, I quit. And it just turns people off. Whereas if they start off with that, they hit the ground running and they see what it's about and they get those moments where they learn and feel good because they're improving. That's what makes for a good game. Does Konami always do it right? No, but I would argue that right now is a good time to really learn like chain links and trigger effects and things. And on top of that, once we do get a balance and things get fixed, we get a fresh start in 2023. I think the game will be much better off without it. So guys, that is my video for today. Please let me know down in the comments that there's something that I forgot. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.